Pomeroy is a cherished children's story that's come to life at the Chicago Shakespeare Theater. The show runs through July 14th. We have actress Celeste M. Cooper here who plays Lisa's mom to chat all about it. Thank you so much for your time today. Yes, thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Yeah, and it's so great to see you. Steppenwolf Ensemble member. We've seen you in shows across Chicago land, but this is your Chicago Shakespeare debut. Yes, and my first children's show. How has this experience been, especially, you know, maybe playing to like a different audience that you're used to? Oh, uh, man, it's it's been it's been a lot of fun and a lot of really cool challenges in terms of just like I'm not used to a noisy crowd of children. Uh, so like in terms, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, I love responses. I love when people respond when when I'm doing uh, other shows. But this was like there was just a, like a show in particular where the kids were just talking the entire time and they're talking about the show. But I just was like y'all are louder than me. And I just, so I, it was just one of those things where I had to really uh, focus to pay, you know, to stay focused with my scene partner versus like thinking about what they just said. Um, <laughs> but they're into it. So now I'm, now I'm used to it, but it, it's just, it was funny the first time that happened. Cause I was like, oh yeah. Like I want the children to be free to do whatever they want to do, but I'm not used to how much they are going to talk sometimes. Yeah, exactly. They think sometimes it's a more of an interactive show than it, you know, than it actually is. Absolutely. And they really want you to interact. So some of the actors in the show or circus performers in particular, like they get to inter engage with the audience, but like, that's not my role. And so I can feel sometimes like even yesterday, some of the kids were like, Hi. and I'm just like, I can't really look at you um, because I have to stay in this world because I'm in the story of, uh, of that is being told. Like I'm, I'm a part of the imagination. So, yeah. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about the role of, of Lisa's mom, because I feel like every parent can relate to everything she's going through and every yeah. kid can kind of relate, you know, as well, too, um, because of the storyline. Let's talk a little bit about that. Yeah. So uh, so Lisa's mom, I named her Vivian. Um, she is uh, she's a lot of fun. I think I never really thought about it until my first um, performance, um, how much stuff like the adults. Um, are looking through my eyes uh, of just like, oh my goodness, like, you you know, you have a child that just wants everything, you know what I mean? Like, I want, th I want this bear, I want it so bad, and da -da -da -da, I'll do whatever I can. And it's just like, I just fed you, I just took you to the store, I got you new shoes, like, I did all these other things, and now you want another thing from me? Like, and so it's just really... I, I I just relate to the idea. Um, I don't have any children, but I have six nieces and nephews. And I think about just sometimes where they don't always take in all the other things on my plate while, while they're asking for additional things. And so uh, I think about that. Um, but then also I think about the thing I love about her and how I enjoy playing her is to bring that as much patience and love and understanding um, that I can because it's just a child. Uh, this she doesn't know um, that she might be asking for a lot in some ways, but she's also a good kid, and so it's like, okay, how can I teach her um, how about responsibility and how to grow? And you know, if this is something you want, yeah, you can do this, this, and this, whatever, and watch her make mistakes, and also still love her through the mistakes and tell her that it's okay that that happens sometimes. So um, I appreciate the journey of the relationship that she has with her and her daughter in this show, this cute, cute show. Yeah, I mean, we, we brought our daughter to, to the show and I've, I, you know, you can relate as a child because I remember those times my parents were like, if you eat all your vegetables, you can do this. If you sit still in church, then we can do this, you know? And you were like, I get to stay up later. I get to play an extra half an hour of video games. Like you thought of all those incentives. And sometimes you tried your best, but your efforts, you know, you end up making more of them. <laughs> more of us than you actually were helping out yeah exactly 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 so so that's definitely what happened yeah <laughs> and, and the other thing too that i love about the show it's about an hour long and it's a great way for kids you know four and up to be able to experience live theater for the first time and not waiting till they're an adult till they're a teenager really getting them involved yeah. in the uh in the process and the experience and i like when i got the email to um to audition for this, like the little girl in me leaped for joy because I loved this book um, when I was little. And and I think in addition to it being maybe some kids, you know, first theater experience, 
it's just such a beautiful story of just like a little girl loving a bear that's missing a button, um, no matter that it's missing a button, you know, like I, my character is like, hey, it's the bear something's wrong like you should get another toy that's not damaged already it's all no. that looks you know new and fresh whatever but you know my daughter is very set on that is the one that I want and I love that so much because you know he spends this journey corduroy spends this journey trying to find a button because he thinks it makes him more worthy um more like something that'll make him more loved and and he'll he'll have a friend and I just love that um he learns in the end like it's not about um that you know like people yeah. love you as you are uh whether you have a button or not and I just I think it's such a beautiful 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 um uh thing to put in a child's mind and even an adult's mind um knowing that I also have been on that journey in different ways in my, throughout my life of like if I could be more like this and more this and more that that will make me more enough and it's like no yeah. you are already enough it's yeah. a good reminder for for the adults in the audience, and also a good lesson for for the kids. And of course, every kid has that one toy that's been like, you know, on, you know, just every kind of Love food it. is still on, but it's like it's their favorite. And yes, yeah, to relate to that. Yes, and can we be that with ourselves? Like, regardless of how imperfect we are, like, can you yeah. love all the imperfections? You know, all the mistakes you made. Can you be gentle? Like. I think it's so great. <laughs> it, it, it's such a wonderful reminder. Is there a new perspective that you've gotten as a, as an actor from working with kids and being a part of this experience? I think it connects a lot with what I was saying of just like um, having to be, get used to their that they're in in uh, their mind that wants to talk to us and to engage in that way. I I sometimes forget the freedom. Um, the unapologetic energy that children have. Um, like, I don't want them to become self-conscious about talking too much. I, I don't want them to become self-conscious about what they put on, you know, what they wear that day, what they do. I think it just, it, for me, as an actor and a performer, it just reminds me to continue to play with, with, with as much freedom and as much boldness as I can, because I think kids... Um, yeah, I'm actually someone that as an adult that I will watch child actors um, because I tend to be like, they are really great studies um, <laughs> and how to be free and to not, you know, apologize for taking up space and just all of it. I think that the joy that they have is such an encouraging and great reminder to see. Let's talk about the, the show in general, because like you said, there's some circus performers. The sets are changing a lot. There's a lot of stuff going on. Talk a little bit about what the experience for the uh, for the theater goal is going to be. Yeah, so it's definitely like so half the cast are circus clown performers. And so they are going to be flipping. They're going to do a lot of different physical um, storytelling that is so incredible uh, and then on the other, the other half of us are saying the words, uh, we're giving you the story of what is happening within the physical story that you're also seeing with the other performers. And I think it's so, so cool because it kind of goes back and forth between a really physical storytelling, um, you know, following Corduroy or a, the storytelling of following me and my daughter. Um, and, you know, there's also two, um, two other clown circus performers that play basically children that are the ones kind of reading the story and we come to life and and there's the night guard that's trying to find corduroy throughout that's kind of like a a fun villain in a sense of uh, but you know a lot of spectacle a lot of lights a lot of different things that might come at you um from the audience uh or to the audience um from the stage mm -hmm. uh it it is moving quickly it moves quickly so it is an hour but it also moves even faster i think yeah we got some performances at 11 a.m we have some days where there's 2 p.m performances uh mm -hmm. as well too the cast members come out uh after the show so the kids get to meet get to meet them and then also you get a uh, ticket to the chicago children's museum located at navy pier too with every children's ticket so it's, you can make it a whole afternoon experience oh, yeah. uh and going to see the show yeah and i mean it's so great right your whole family can see it your whole yeah. family can attend and have uh, and have a way into the story, which I think is so great. And, and it takes you to Navy Pier by the yeah by the water and all the different things here on the pier. Like what a great experience to start your day with the play and then experience all of what Navy Pier has to offer. 
Oh, exactly. Well, Celeste, thank you so much for your time today. Corduroy at Chicago Shakespeare Theater, of course, located at Navy Pier now through July 14th, chicagoshakes.com for tickets. And uh, we'll see you at the theater very, very soon. Awesome. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.